Well, I'm trying to make up my mind if I like this thing or not. It's a bit of a brick. Very slow. Oh, oh. Squirrel. Ah, oh, shoot. Well, on the bright side, it looks like I've got his attention now. Yeah, here he comes. This looks like a situation that's going to end in mutual death. <laughs> not today, my friend. Not today. Eh, not so slow after all. Hello friends, Ranger1 here again. I started out with a big heavy KV-1, but we're actually going to be looking at the light tank, the T-80. I, I know, I know, nobody ever does a video on the T-80, and probably for good reason. It's, it's a very mediocre tank. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't have very good luck with this tank. I frankly didn't like it very much at all. In most of the matches that I ran this tank, I, I found its performance to be mediocre at best. It it has pretty good armor, uh, especially on the hull, although it has a lot of weak spots that can be exploited. It can get up to a, a high rate of speed. I think it's about 42 kilometers per hour. Don't quote me on that. But it it has to have the terrain kind of working in its favor to get anywhere close to that. A nice straight flat stretch or preferably downhill. It doesn't climb hills particularly well. It, it, it does okay with it. I guess its biggest strength is it's got a, a pretty decent gun. It's not outstanding by any stretch. This is pretty good for a light tank. But, well, its other main strength was that it, by a hair, it maneuvers fairly well in close. It can accelerate from a, a standing start to at least a decent rate of speed compared to a lot of tanks fairly quickly. And it can turn in close from a slow or, or barely moving uh, stance. It can turn better than a lot of tanks can. Now that's not saying a whole lot, but it is an advantage that this tank has. It's just very hard to get into a position where you can actually take advantage of that. But I'm about to see that even though the T-80 looks like the result of a tragic accident involving a, a rabbit hutch, a, a set of Venetian blinds, and an air conditioning system from a cheap motel, it's about to show me that sometimes when the situation is right, it has the guts to hold on when it needs to, even when outnumbered. I'm about to enter into a fun little knife fight with a couple of medium tanks over this capture point. It turned out better than I had expected. Be sure to look for the comedy cameo appearance of that Panzer II C who appears to be having trouble controlling his tank.
Yeah, reinforcements finally arrived. Just in time, probably. Just in time to rob me of my last kill. But that's okay. We kept the capture point, and we're going to go on to win this match. And I will pick up that extra kill just a little bit later on. You know, I think when you get right down to it, that's one of the main reasons why I like to play War Thunder. When you take a vehicle that you really don't have any hope of getting an enjoyable game out of, and every once in a while it just surprises the heck out of you. It kind of makes it all worthwhile. I like the unexpected. So I think I'm going to make a habit of going through the hangar once in a while, picking out those planes and tanks that I had written off a long time ago, and breaking them out, and giving them a run for their money now and again. To be perfectly honest, I've never put a big priority on always grinding for the highest ranking planes or tanks that I can possibly drive. I kind of like to take my time and smell the roses. If nothing else, I kind of enjoy the challenge. Well, that's it for this episode. My time's a little short. I'm preparing to devote some time to getting some footage of the 12th annual Eve Alliance Tournament coming up over the next few weekends, so the next few War Thunder videos will probably be a little on the short and sweet side. Bear with me, please. It's just going to take a while to get through this enormous tournament and get something worthwhile for you guys to see. I'm going to let you go for right now. Until I see you again, good hunting.